by B-Side players here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we end today's show with two teachers who have lost their jobs, one in Michigan and the other in Arizona. We go first to Michigan, where an eighth-grade charter school teacher has been fired after helping her students organize a fundraiser for Trayvon Martin's parents. Brooke Harris and her students at Pontiac Academy for Excellence drew up a plan to raise money by donating one dollar each to wear a hoodie to school, as Martin had worn when he was shot dead. She obtained permission for the fundraiser, but her superintendent opposed the plan. Harris was initially suspended and then later fired outright after visiting an after-school literacy fair to support her students. Harris's dismissal has received national attention. The Southern Poverty Law Center has taken up the fight for her reinstatement. The nonprofit Teaching Tolerance uh, program started at a petition at Change.org on Harris's behalf, which has well over 150,000 signatures. Her supporters are planning a rally outside the school next Monday if the superintendent doesn't fire, hire her back by today. About 200 people attended a similar rally Tuesday. Reverend Charles Williams of King Solomon Baptist Church has called for Harris to be immediately reinstated. We are calling unequivocally uh, on our, the principal and of the board members of the Pontiac Academy to rehire her uh, and to reinstate her immediately. We are going to that was Brooke Harris. Um, we are we are going now to uh, Tucson, Arizona. Um, Tucson, Arizona is a place where another teacher has been fired. By the way, Brooke Harris has uh, not taken legal action at this point. In Arizona, we're going to the head of the Tucson school districts embattled acclaimed Mexican American studies program. Um, who has been fired from his job. Sean Arce was dismissed at the school district members' board meeting Tuesday night amidst vocal protests from dozens of supporters. Earlier this month, Arce was awarded the 2012 Miles Horton Education Award for Teaching People's History from the Howard Zinn Education Project. Tucson's Mexican-American Studies program has been under attack following the passage of a bill which prohibits schools from offering ethnic studies courses. Arizona Superintendent of Public Instruction John Hooper Hoopenthal ruled the Mexican-American Studies program violated the new state law. In our determination, we found that these classes were promoting ethnic resentment. Um, they were promoting ethnic solidarity in ways that are really intolerable in an educational en environment. Under the ruling, the district would have lost up to $14 million in funding this fiscal year had it allowed the program to carry on. School officials released a list of seven banned books that can no longer be used in classrooms after the suspension of the program. Officials told teachers to stay away from any books where, quote, race, ethnicity and oppression are central themes. The banned books include Rethinking Columbus, The Next 500 Years, Shakespeare's play The Tempest, Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paulo Freire, and Chicano, The History of the Mexican Civil Rights Movement, the Mexican-American Civil Rights Movement. Speaking to Democracy Now! earlier this year, Superintendent Hoopenthal denied that any books had been banned. In no way, shape or form are we banning any kind of books or any kind of viewpoint from the classroom. But we are saying that if all you're teaching these students is one viewpoint, one dimension, we can readily see that it's not an accurate history. It's not an education at all. It's not teaching these kids to think critically, but instead it's an indoctrination. To discuss the controversy in Arizona, we go to Tucson to speak to Sean Arce, um, dismissed on Tuesday night. Um, for he's the head of Tucson School District's Mexican Studies program. Welcome to Democracy Now, Sean. Uh, talk about what happened this week and what's happened to the program and what's happening to you. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, um, this this uh, law HB 2281 uh, coming from our state legislature uh, put a lot of political uh, pressure on our local school district. And unfortunately, our, our school district, Tucson Unified, under the leadership of John Petticone, cowered to this racist legislation and uh, essentially eliminated a very effective uh, course of instruction, a course of instruction wherein Latino students became highly engaged, uh, uh, had higher graduation rates, and had a, uh, a closing of the achievement gap, something that uh, urban school districts 
uh, throughout the country are seeking aggressively in ways in which to uh, close the achievement gap for Latino students. Well, uh, Sean Arce, it's bad enough that they've decided to end the program, but what excuse did they use for uh, uh, telling you you no longer have a job uh, starting in September? Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, the thinly uh, veiled attempt uh, to explain my uh, release from the district is a is that they were going in a different direction. But when in fact we know um, uh, this was a, a, a act of retaliation, in that I, along with many others, uh, stood up and, and see this law as unconstitutional. Um, this this law is is is, is discriminatory. It's uh, it really. Uh, focuses on a disparate treatment, points out one group of students, which being Mexican-American Latino, and uh, because we stood up, uh, the district has retaliated. And what's been the the response uh, in the uh, Tucson community uh, to uh, both the abolition of the program and then now to your mm -hmm. firing? Mm -hmm. uh, the response has been overwhelming uh, in favor of actually restoring Mexican-American studies. Uh, Mexican-American Latino students within TUSD uh, have experienced for years a, a disparate and discriminatory treatment. Currently, Tucson Unified School District, under the leadership of John Petticone, has been put back under a 30-plus year uh, desegregation uh, uh, plan, desegregation suit, because the district has not acted in good faith with the Mexican American Latino community. So uh, something that uh, was very organic, something that the community demanded to be, uh, for the district to be responsive to the academic, the social needs of our students, the, our community created this Mexican American Studies program. And now uh, the district, again, encountering to the racists and being accomplices to that racism, particularly John Petticone, uh, has in, in essence has uh, abolished a very effective, a, a very uh, engaging, uh, something that is very cherished, a, a, a program, an effective educational model for Latino students. Sean Arce, I wanted to ask you about uh, another issue going on in Arizona. A headline we read yesterday. Uh, two people trying to cross into the United States from Mexico having been killed in an apparent attack by an armed militia. According to Pima County Sheriff's Department, the victims were killed when a pickup truck carrying up to 30 undocumented immigrants near the Arizona town of Aloy was ambushed by subjects in camouflage clothing armed with rifles. The attack coming as Arizona lawmakers are considering a measure that would create a state-backed armed militia to work with Border Patrol agents along the U.S.-Mexico border to capture undocumented immigrants. Do you know anything about this? Yes, I, unfortunately, I did hear of this uh, this occurrence, and this is very telling of the the anti-Mexican, the anti-immigrant uh, sentiment here in the state of Arizona. It is very pervasive, and unfortunately, it has seeped into our, our public institutions, particularly our public schools, wherein uh, Mexican American Latino students are actually uh, dehumanized. So this is this. Uh, our instance of, of a, the elimination of an effective educational program is really a reflection and is something within the context of this greater uh, anti-Mexican, anti-Latino sentiment within the state of Arizona. And unfortunately, our school district uh, is, is actually perpetuating uh, such a sentiment within our schools. Well, Sean Arce, we want to thank you very much for being with us. We're going